Athens, Georgia is home to the Georgia Bulldogs. An amazing music scene. And us, Epting Events. Just your average, everyday, family-owned catering company that travels all over the place. This is our story. The Art of Catering Food Conference started a couple years ago that is really geared towards the culinary and food side of catering. They hold this once a year, it rotates different cities. This year, they're actually coming to Atlanta. There's the best education form, hands down, that you can come and see and learn and experience and taste. I think that the, the group of caterers that Carl's pulled together is exceptional. I, I learned from everybody in the room. Cater Source comes at a really great time of the year, and caterers are early adopters. So they love getting what's new and different. Three days, catering food. The LCA is Leading Caterers of America. Three years ago, we were invited to be a member. That's 40 or 50 of us that have been invited to represent our regional catering. And we come together a couple of times a year to talk about the industry, how we can shape it, what our practices are. We've got a small group of the executive committee from the Leading Caterers of America. And they're coming to stay on the Hill for a day before the conference in Atlanta. You know, the Hill is uh, giving me an opportunity to collect and put together all the things that are important in my life. It's my heritage, it's Southern heritage. It's an orphanage for old homes. When you have these houses, it offers me the opportunity to host people from out of town that come in from other parts of the world and to share it and to educate people. And it gets them a touch just a touch of what the Old South was. So, what, what we own is known as the uh, Fennessy Plantation. After the war, Mr. Fennessy gave his favorite slave 50 acres of land. Yeah. And the youngest kid, uh, grandkid, we know built this around 1920. It's been so much fun to have all the LCA folks out here. They're caterers, they're people that entertain folks all the time. This little piggy built his house out of stone. All the others built theirs out of straw and wood, and they're all gone. This is the only ones left. And this is a way for me to entertain them in a little different way than they were probably used to. Explain to me what you're doing here, Lee. I'm making Georgia ice cream. It's otherwise known as grits. Well, we call it Georgia ice cream. You know, I like to serve fresh stuff, so I always go out early in the morning and pick my grits fresh off the grit tree up there. The grit tree is one of Dad's favorite ways to mess with Yankees. It's a fun way to see how much they know about Southern food and Southern culture. I don't, how do you, what do you mean you're picking grits? I didn't know they come coming. It's a grit tree. This is a grit tree. you never seen a grit tree? She's from Pennsylvania. She I, 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 I don't even think filming. I've eaten grit. She little... has never picked grit from a grit tree. See if you can find a grit. See if you can find one. You see the little ones coming out? Where? Right there. Oh my God, you're kidding me. No yeah. way. Get it. Where? Well, you just shook it off. I don't believe you. Sure it is. <laughs> I, I don't like it. It's not cooked yet. You don't eat oh. it raw. Kelly. Lord have mercy alive. <laughs> Wait, you see this uh, at the uh, show. AOCF? Oh, you're going to make grits for the show? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about, grits. And then we're off to Atlanta, to the big convention over there. They're going to make me have a speech about heritage cooking. I'm about a nervous wreck. I'm not too good at getting up there. So here we are at the Art of Catering Food, second time ever that I've been to this event, and uh, getting to present later on today with Dad about heritage food and heritage cooking. I think that I'm really just here as a wrangler to try to keep him close to the 30-minute time window that he's got pumpkins to the thing that had brought tomatoes, but it was said that Lee's an emotional wreck. Last night he practiced by himself in his room and he said, it's still 36 minutes, how in the hell am I going to get it? 
to 30 minutes. Hell, I'm just going to do 45 and ask him to forgive it. Just, I'm sorry, y'all. I need a few more minutes. I hadn't seen him this way since uh, my parents got their divorce. <laughs> I tell you, uh, when I get nervous, I'm shaking right now. My, my, my knees are going. You'll be fine, Dad. Just move the buffets or something. Lee can talk, he can talk to, to you or to this camera or to whoever's watching for millenniums, but to script something and then try to be going off of it, he is, it's killing him. His legs get to shaking, you know, and his, he just, I just, and his fingers get to twitching. <laughs> and then what he'll do is he'll do other tasks, anything but study. Yeah. Lee is currently wandering around looking uh, for something to fix. Uh, he's changed the table around like two or three times already. Was there something wrong with it? Uh, I don't think it was something wrong with it. It just wasn't what he wanted. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and what's that saying that you were uh, saying? If it, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. That's please uh, slogan. He's been a wreck, but he'll get through it. Hell, it'll be fine. With Daniel playing off of me, it can't be anything except uh, interesting. So if I get a good, strong coffee or a pain aid, I'll just be fine. Sit down and learn something about watermelon. <laughs> You're a wreck. Yeah, this is just in case. No, please don't. <laughs> please don't give him any uppers. Elise had this thing about pain aids since, I don't know, 82? I want my pain aid. They come up with a BC powder. If I want a BC powder, I'd ask for a BC powder. I want a pain aid. Just give me a pain aid. Everybody, give me a pain aid. Everybody's got to have a little crutch. I got a little crutch. It's okay. It's just like a strong aspirin. And if I had that, then I've got good luck. So it's a psychological thing. Pain is one of his good luck charms. It's just one of those things that he thinks the party's going to be okay. I believe in luck. I go by Dairy Lane, I eat pain aid. I mean, I eat something. I go by the I ice shop and I eat pain aid. <laughs> Have lunch, You're not supposed to be talking so loud when this. We have a sound buffer right there, it's fine. No, it bothers the hell out of me when we don't talk. I'm quietly talking to myself. I'm not talking to y'all. Y'all about to wear me out. I need to go take a nap. So, would you please give me one pain aid? A real one. One that is in the right. Is this what you want? I want the one out of that package. <laughs> Now, would you play squash, pumpkin, corn, Spanish brother pigs, still running lost by island, Germans brother mussels, all got the The great influence was the African slave that came. The uh, stew, the fry, the gravy, and the there pork. You go. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Sure was a damn lot of effort. Don't ever go anywhere, young man, without having me a pain aid. When I need, I might get caught by a cop. I'll need to get through the thing. Give him the spiel. It'll be important to make it work. I, got I can get out of it with a pain aid. <sighs> See? Nothing to it. Don't even have to go to the bathroom now. Oh, we got the stewed foods, so and so and so, green tomatoes, so and so. I got the fried foods, pork, fried pork chops, fried green tomatoes. So we got kind of two ends of it that we're talking about. Dad's talking about heritage cooking, and then Janice and I are poised to give a talk on barbecue. My name is Ashley Epting. Uh, this is Chef Janice Witcher, my brother, Daniel Epting. And she's gonna act shy. She's not shy. I'm gonna tell you a little quick story. Ashley is normally the storyteller. I'm gonna tell this one. This guy asked his wife, said, why do you cut the ends off the ham when you cook them? And she said, I don't know. My mama always cut the ends off the ham. So he went to his mother-in-law and said, well, why do you cut the ends off the ham when you cook them? She said, my mama always cut them off. So he went to the grandmom. He said, well, why did you cut the ends off the ham? And she said, well, the pan was too little, so I had to cut. <laughs> I, I had to cut the ends off the ham. The essentials on here. 
come up with your own signature rubs. So you've got a good foundation that you can get your crew on, you've got some consistency. Self-basting rotisserie, and make sure you've got some drippings, how we cook it, what we cook it in, how long. So we're just going through all the different phases of how you get that pork to the table. Y'all can come up here and talk with us. We've got samples on the side, put your own sauce in there, little forks up here. It was exciting and humbling to talk about this in front of all these professionals and so many people that have gone to culinary school and to see these people that could have just picked it apart or if there was anything wrong with it, you know, we would have seen it on their faces, even if they were polite enough not to tell us. Ashley and Janice, they absolutely nailed it. They had people coming up afterwards and saying, boy, that's the best barbecue I've ever put in my mouth. Doesn't even need sauce on it. They were sitting at the table with some more sauce on their buns, and I was like, no, Mr. Lee told me get this one right here, and that's what you're gonna eat. And I had to find your daddy, because <laughs> by God, I mean, literally, what you did there was more right than I've ever seen anywhere. It was well, give me a hug. Oh, oh, yes, oh yes, wow. Sir. There's so many talented folks at this convention. It just really made me feel good to have that many professionals around loving what we produce. The success of the industry is partially due to connections with people, like people like you and people like everybody else that's out here. And, and it just works. It's kind of simple. It, kind of yeah, simple. Yeah, yeah. it really is. Yeah. It is that simple. In the end, it's just relationships. It's people. Yeah. It's you know understanding what's different about, about each of us and embracing it and the beauty of that. It was a real honor to meet new people, making connections with all these professionals. This, these, these, this is the <laughs> acting event where we were for the two days that they put us up in Southern hospitality like you would not believe. And Lee is actually speaking. Who else is speaking? Yeah, uh, right Dad, after lunch. My brother, this is my brother. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All after lunch, so be ready. But wait till you meet but, their father. Yes. Yeah, Lee is oh, the Lee keynote is, on there is, with a the sidebar. He is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, I guess we gotta get ready for Dad yeah, on there. Yeah. Nice Pleasure to meet you all. Our next speaker is Epic Events from Athens, Georgia. This company's been around for 42 years, and they are full-service caterers and event planners. They do everything from soup to nuts, and they're a great company. So let's give a big hand for Daniel Epting. Hey, uh, all right, sound check. Art of Catering Food 2014. Let's get really loud one time. One, two, three. Yeah! yeah! All right. I was ner a little nervous coming on after lunch, but uh, I'm glad to hear that you're awake. Uh, I'm not sure if my dad's done eating yet, so I'm going to talk until he shows up at some point. But uh, I, I am looking forward to an introduction on him. This man embraces what he's about to tell you. He has raised my brother and I on it. He lives it. He breathes it. He teaches it. He professes it. He does everything else about it. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Lee Epting. For the life of me, I do not know how we got 500 people to come to Georgia in August. Beats the hell out of me. <laughs> I want to let you know from the beginning, I'm not a chef. I am intimidated by all of these chefs out here. I, I'm a taster of food, a uh, party giver, and I'm a teller of tales. I'm just going to tell stories. So, what is Southern Heritage food? Y'all got a screen up there, and I've got to look at this. I feel like the President of the United States sitting up here, but I also feel like George Bush, who can't read these things very well, and might, might not get the words right. I think the speech went pretty well uh, overall. I got a little nervous here and there, but... Uh-oh, you missed my... What is that? That's me. I need... There you are. Whoa, where am I? Y'all, I lost my place. Uh, oh, yeah, then the Scotch Irish. See, I lost my place there. Moving on, we got the hog. You used everything of that majestic animal except the... Anybody seen Deliverance? The movie Deliverance? They figured out how to use the squeal in that one. Next. Making Georgia proud. <laughs> You keep going, Daddy, you got him. All right. I don't know if they learned anything or not, but they said it was a lot of fun. It really started about World War I, and our boys, you know, they hadn't been out of the county, much less out of the state of Georgia, and they just assumed that everybody knew about grits. I think they picked up on the grit tree. 
Hell, they got up north, they found out they didn't know what a grit tree was, much less how to pick them. So all the folks came out there on Saturday. I took him out to the grit tree and we started picking the grit so we could make, what are you laughing about? <laughs> There it is right there. I wouldn't lie to you, it's a grit tree in my yard. I had all kinds of stories to tell them. I could have talked to all the rest of the day. We all gotta right. get on with it. We gotta, we gotta get about on. 10 we more five. minutes now. All right, there we are on the back porch. Uh, I haven't done it. Let's move on. They were pushing me off the stage. Just go ahead on past that. Yeah, it'll be on. Oh, that's a great story about the net. Damn it. It'll be available uh, for stories afterwards. But I darn sure wasn't gonna get off there without the dog lick soup story. Now that gets to a little story. You see right there, we had a, a dinner down in Madison, Georgia, and we were at an antebellum kitchen and we were cooking over the fire and I got one of my guys stirring the pot and I go out to set the buffet up and I come back in, we got this fancy photographer from Atlanta and they're fussing and he's saying, you gonna pour that soup out, aren't you? And I said, excuse me? He said, the dog went up and tasted it and uh, you can't serve that. I said, oh hell, that just give it a little extra flavor. We don't worry about things like that down here. I said, nah. <laughs> now I am gonna go out there and tell them what happened and they can make up their own mind whether they wanna eat it or not. They ate every damn bit of it. I've been serving it ever since. We don't take the dog anymore, nor the photographer. Uh, but it's good. All right. I did fairly well for 30 minutes. It's all over with, thank the good Lord. I only got rushed there at the end when, when they wouldn't let me tell all my stories. You seen the difference in the, you see what I'm talking about now? What's that? The pain that gives me. It gets you hyped. No, it gives me a positive attitude. It's not even hype. They don't understand what a pain aid does. It brings positive thoughts to my mind. It, it makes me feel positive. And, and that's the difference. I mean, that's good luck. I know I've got good luck. It's like when you pay the rain deposit. It's real, yeah, it is. You pay the rain deposit, and I know it's not gonna rain. Wait, what's the rain deposit? <clears throat> you pay $50, and I guarantee no rain. So when I ride up, and it's raining all the way to Atlanta, and everybody's worried about what we're gonna do. I said, you ain't gotta worry about it. It's gonna quit when we get there. They paid the rain deposit. Or I asked them, did they pay it? And they said, no, and I said, oh, shit. If they say they did pay it, I know they paid it, so I don't have to worry about it. And it always works out. So you gotta believe in that kind of stuff, the karma and all that. And if you do, it works. Okay, well that's why I wanted my pain aid. And I don't want a BC powder to substitute. You can't substitute that. You can't pay me $100 and make the rain go away. It would ruin the whole thing. $50 is what it costs. Does that make sense? All right, thank you.